My name is Moran Hilgedorka with the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program. And you all probably know a, a great deal about it already. And so I um, wondered how much background I should provide. And then I realized that a lot of the people's, a lot of your names weren't familiar to me. So I'm providing a little more background than I normally do. The National Estuary Program was established in 87 as an amendment to the Clean Water Act. In 94, the governor, uh, the then governor um, of Florida, Lawton Child, submitted an application to design, designate the estuarine system around Charlotte Harbor as an estuary of national significance. Congress accepted that application and the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program was created. There are now 28 estuaries of national significance within the program and we had the distinction of having three side by side. Sarasota just to the north of us. Sarah, you wanna? Sarah's my counterpart there. The Tampa Bay to the north of them and uh, Indian River Lagoon on the east coast. The two things that are, I think, <laughs> special about the Charlotte Harbor National Street Program from the other programs is that we really do focus on the partnership aspect of our program. We recognize from the, the program recognized from the very beginning that it's the strength of all of you doing great work to protect the natural environment that would, be, would allow us to fulfill our plan to protect the environment. And the other thing they recognize is that you can't protect the water unless you protect the land that drains into it. So we very much focus on the watershed. So that's why you've heard people from all over Southwest Florida, from Polk County, Lee County, uh, Manti County, I think most everybody is from the counties that participate in the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program. So thank you all very much. I want you just to take a moment and close your eyes and think about that place, preferably within the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program system, which is from Venice to Benita Springs to Winter Haven, that is a place that you consider to be the most beautiful place, the place that you go to to relax. So close your eyes, think about that spot, think about the things that you see there, that you hear there, maybe that you smell there. Okay, before you all go into a deep trance, <laughs> um, would anybody be willing to share the spot that uh, they go to for, um, as a place of, the, of significant beauty? Ah. Carla? Little Pine Island Falls. Ah. Okay. Deer Prairie Creek. Different creek here. In Sarasota <laughs> County. It's got great uplands and a great kayaking area. Great. So if you all aren't familiar with those areas, maybe you could talk to them during the break. So this, from the very beginning, our program recognized that um, art is a way to reach people. And so they commissioned two people to create uh, art, artwork that we've then converted into posters and this is one of the two posters and as a thank you to all the speakers that are here today we're, we're giving them either the uh, sign print by uh, Diane Pierce who's an artist who now lives in Polk County and um, the other one is a, a photograph that was uh, donated by Clyde Butcher of Mayaka River State Park after a tropical storm went through so it's a walking trail that's flooded so there's a few things that um, are common through all the National Estuary programs. We're guided by a plan. And this is one of the items that you could pick up at the table. This is our plan. This is the third version of it. And um, it's half the size of the first one, thanks to our <laughs> succinct writing and uh, <laughs> uh, great use of graphics, which Lisa created almost all of the graphics that are in here. So help yourself to this. There's also a smaller version that we call the summary. So this is the, uh, the, the cliff version of the CCMP. We are directed by four committees, our policy committee, our management committee, our technical advisory committee. We are directed by four committees, our policy committee, our management committee, our technical advisory committee, and our assistance advisory committee. I don't think anybody's here from the management or policy committees, but is there anybody here from the technical advisory committee? And for the Citizens Advisory Committee, we have several people who are, who are active with the CAC. If you could raise your hands. And we'd like the rest of you to consider joining us. <laughs> we meet four times a year. Those four committees guide our program. And they consider all the issues that um, are addressed by our program. And they guide our outreach work. So this program today is thanks to the Citizens Advisory Committee. So thank you all for your work. 
There's four issues that our program focuses on. It's fish and wildlife habitat loss, water quality degradation, hydrologic alterations or water flow, and stewardship gaps. And we fulfill that plan by supporting research, restoration, outreach, and advocacy. And we define outreach, we use words uh, interchangeably, and we mean them in a comprehensive way. So when we say outreach, we mean anything that helps reach the public, reach the, the uh, target audiences, so that they could do more to protect the environment. A few years ago, we received a small grant from EPA to help develop a strategic communication plan. And so with that, we uh, developed some principles and some goals. And for those of you who are familiar with our program, these will all be very, very uh, familiar to you because uh, they've, they've been our guiding principles since, um, since the program began. We want to increase awareness and understanding. We want to further partnerships. We fill in the gaps. A lot of you are doing great works. So our intention is not to duplicate the good works of others, uh, but to fill in the gaps. And one of those examples is our, um, we have seven counties, and five counties have great Florida Yards and Neighborhoods programs and great active chapters of the Florida Native Plant Society. But uh, Hardy and Soda counties don't. So since 2005, we've been offering workshops to help provide the residents of those counties with information about, being, uh, about conservation landscaping. We're fair and equitable. We cover seven counties. Um, I don't even like to say where our office is located because people sometimes think that because we're located in Fort Myers, somehow we have a, a bias towards uh, Fort Myers or Lee County, but we, we, we love Polk County as much as we do <laughs> Manatee County and all, the, all seven counties. Um, we're, we're thrifty, <laughs> and we, are, we develop programs that appeal to a broad base. Um, and we try to change behavior, not just provide information. Our goal is not to have, you know, gazillion fact sheets that reach, that are, you know, distributed at 10,000 events. But we want to really make people think about what they're doing and change their behavior. Our goals are you know, to, to improve all of our principles, uh, increase our partners, strengthen our partners. Uh, this workshop today is one of the ways we try to strengthen our partnerships. And uh, we want to influence others to do more to protect the environment, thereby fulfilling our plan to protect the environment. Um, but, you know, for us, it is all about the strength of our partners. A few of our outreach projects, and I'm just, I'm going to talk just about a few of the things because we do quite a bit. And ways we support our partners are, are through networking, like this program today. We're, uh, later this month, we're going to have a conservation landscaping workshop, which if you got my email, you saw the link to, to that. It'll be September 26th at the Charlotte Harbor Event Conference Center. And we also award grants. Since the very beginning of the program, they awarded grants. Um, right now, we have two programs. One's called a public outreach grant, which I'm sorry to say the timing is not good because the deadline to apply was Wednesday. <laughs> um, that, that grant is available once a year. Uh, historically, we've been able to fund about half the applications that have come in, but um, this year, we won't, it won't be quite as, uh, as high because of the number of applications and the, and the budget available. We also have micro-grants, which are usually up to $250. You can apply for those anytime throughout the year. One of the conditions is that the work has to be done during the, the, the fiscal year that the grant was awarded, which for us is October 1st through September 30th. And uh, this past year, we awarded over 50 micro-grants, and um, I, I think it was uh, about 12 public outreach grants. We stay in touch with people. We have a quarterly magazine that we're now uh, publishing our 17th issue. For the last few years, it's been a 16-page publication with the middle part dedicated to a poster. So I brought a few with me. And, um, and also, um, our website crashed and it's still being rebuilt, but eventually all of the files, that all the documents that you see will be on our website as PDF files. I'm also working on having them on Pinterest um, so that you can download them. We commissioned a, a woman by the name of Don Witherington to create two posters for us, one on uh, estuaries, which has g gotten a great comments, and the other one is on watersheds, specifically the water flow, and that's going to be in the, in the next issue of Harbor Happenings. Our website is a um, repository, so everything that we've done is usually posted on our website for available for people to use. And we've produced a, a ton of videos. 
mostly in cooperation with WGC Public Media, and mostly with Rosie Emery as the producer. Um, and then we have worked in to address target audience issues. One of the things that we've done is we have a children's book, Adventures in the Charlotte Harbor Watershed. We work with the seven school districts and distribute 18,000 each school year. And then lots of great things have come out as a result of this. And one of this, those is Lee County School Districts, the folks at the end, created um, read-along videos that feature Carol Mahler, who's the author, a, a group of students that we call the Adventurers, and several experts. And Melissa's one of those experts on there. <laughs> and uh, all, all of our videos are posted on YouTube. And one of the great things with the WGC is the quality is really high, but also we own the videos, so we can post them on YouTube, so they're available that way. We provide them on DVDs, and, and a lot of government access channels will, will broadcast them for us, too. Um, I did bring a DVD of, the, of all the videos that were produced prior to last year, and I'm working on the DVD for the newest video, so help yourself to those. Um, if you use them, I would really appreciate getting an email message from you to, to let me know how you use them and how they made a difference. And, and to, you know, with all the social media stuff, it's amazing. There's pockets around the country. You know, our focus is Southwest Florida, but we have a huge contingency of people who follow us that are on the East Coast <laughs> and um, Washington State, uh, Kansas City, <laughs> And a lot of it's because of the videos. We have done a few other things that are um, special, let me say. Um, the last couple of years, we have designated a student at each of the five science fairs in our study area to, whose work somehow helps implement our plan to protect the environment. So, um, and that's, the judges are all volunteers, so thank you very much. And um, the, the students are featured in an issue of Harbor Happening, so you can take a look at those too. Since 2005, we've been asking people to donate images that show the beauty of the natural environment. So this is our 2013 calendar. The 2014 is, is uh, about two weeks away from be, being sent to the printer. Help yourself to these. And one of the things that we'll put up on the, on the table is a request that you help distribute our materials to your staff, to your volunteers, to your guests. So if you would like to receive any of these materials on a regular basis, just let me know. The easiest way would be to put down that or to email me, um, or you could tell me too. This year, um, for the first time ever, we, you know, we have this history of reaching artistic people. So songwriting is another artistic means. And uh, so, so we had a songwriting contest, and we received 15 entries, which the CAC reviewed at the last meeting. Uh, they were pretty, pretty interesting. Um, <laughs> the CAC opted to uh, recognize four of them whose, um, some, whose, whose, whose uh, scripts somehow helped you know, provide information about the, uh, so the natural environment of Southwest Florida. So we hope to do that again, um, this probably is provide a, a little more guidance uh, for the future, shorten the songs. So we're, you know, we're trying creative ways to reach the public, and so that was one of our, our new creative ways. And, and this is just a, a, a sampling of some of the things that we've done. Um, in the strategic communication plan is an appendix that lists a lot more things, so if you'd like to have the whole detail, I, I'd be happy to provide it, but I just wanted to let you know some of the things we're working on. For the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program, Next year is our year to get into social media. We have had a long history of having videos on YouTube. We're going to add them to Vimeo. We use Eventbrite, as you all are now very familiar with. <laughs> Maybe much to your chagrin. They did an upgrade, which made it more difficult. Um, so it, it, in the past, had been very easy. But with this upgrade, it, uh, yeah, it may not have been so helpful. Um, Facebook, we've had a volunteer who created the Facebook page for us, but now we're able to do that in, in, um, in the office, and so that will be a priority. Thank you very much. Thanks. Twitter, you all know the social media aspects. I've already talked about Pinterest, where we'll have our posters there. Lisa's created a ton of, uh, of uh, illustrated uh, artwork that, to help explain difficult scientific concepts, that we'll post all those there. Since 2005, I've said we've been accepting donated images of uh, the beauty and diversity of the natural environment of Southwest Florida and have included a few of them in our calendars. We're now creating um, a Flickr and a Tumblr account so that people could get a photo probably once a week with a paragraph or so about that, 
that image, and that will uh, start, start uh, that service will begin as of December 1st. We're also uh, taking some of those, uh, those, most of them are photographs, but some are paintings, and grouping them by subject matter, and we'll create slideshows that will be available through lots of different means, too. And one of our most ambitious thing is um, our Citizens Academy, which is our e-learning website. One of the, the things that we've made the most progress on has been our videos that will help uh, either explain a difficult concept or help motivate people to continue learning more about the natural environment and doing more to, to protect the natural environment. And that's where all of your ideas come from. They'll help build that Citizens Academy. So I wanted to thank you all very much. And um, we do operate by committee. Um, our formal committees are require voting rights to participate. But anybody who wants to help us protect the environment, we, we'd be happy to have your participation in, in um, our in that committee, but also in our other committees that further our projects. So for the Citizens Academy, I plan on creating an informal email committee. <laughs> so there won't be any meetings, but I'll send you updates asking you for your input and your guidance so that we could further that, that project. But the goal will be that the e-learning site will have quizzes on it. Um, it will have everything that we've come uh, familiar with with uh, social media. We'll have um, online games and uh, links to all the videos. So that, that'll be a way of explaining the difficult concepts that we need people to understand. And uh, recently we just uh, provided in English <laughs> descriptions of some of the water quality parameters. You know, a lot of the people are, you know this, this that's their job. But for m most of the public, um, most of the public doesn't even know the word estuary. Um, from a lot of surveys, we know maybe 10% of the population knows that word. So we're starting with that base. And so this water quality, these water quality definitions will help further the understanding of why these things are important and uh, things that they could do to help solve those, those issues. There are two other things I wanted to mention that are on the table. We have... Every three years, we have what we call our Watershed Summit. It's an opportunity for people to present their latest research findings. I do feel like I'm playing tennis here. <laughs> um, and for the last three, we have created a special issue of, of Florida Scientist. And so the journal that's on the table is that last special issue. All of the files are on our website as PDF files. So if you wanted uh, the um, articles from earlier summits, those are available too. Our next Watershed Summit is March 25th through 27th. 2014. It'll be at the Charlotte Harbor Event and Conference Center. We are, um, we have a subset of, uh, we have a committee that's meeting next Tuesday to help review the abstracts that have come in. So we'll, we'll know more after that what the topics will be. But we'll, we expect three full days of great presentations on some of the latest and greatest findings on the, on the, on the, by our researchers. And I've got a minute and 35 seconds left. <laughs> Are there any, uh, any questions? And, you know, of course, I'll be here all day. Lisa is here all day. She's the program director. Um, I'm sure that she could answer any questions, too. Uh, Liz is the next person speaking. She'll be here through the break. Um, so talk to her. The people on the CAC, if you'd raise your hands again. Those are the people who are most engaged with our program. So if you have any questions, definitely feel free to talk to them about our, the work of the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program. Talk to them about the Citizens Advisory Committee. And definitely talk to them about how, how you can join the Citizens <laughs> Advisory Committee. So with that, thank you all very much. And we're officially off. <laughs>